on ten cents a stone, which means that the higher areas are a harder mineral, which is not weathering um, nearly as much. And again, this is primarily from from acid rain, but from just general rain and weathering. Um, but acid rain is the real catalyst in this. Um, but anyway, the, the high points, I mean, you can see how much higher it used to be. So, I mean, there's a lot worn away. You can really become really a variegated surface. And some stones will, it will do this way more than others. So, again, it's, even in a quarry, if, if you're quarrying one part, like right over there, 20, 10 feet away, and you're right here, the stone can be different because er, geologically it just depends on, on the forces and the setup. Uh, it's pretty good digging, actually, compared to Nedra. Yeah. Seems like everywhere I dig recently, it's just solid rock. Every time I try to dig a hole, I always hit rock. This is nice. Sand. That root probably pushed that stone over, though? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. We don't know what point it could just fall over on its own, so... You can see what's going on here now. So we're just about up, still bound in a little. So we want to just take a little more away. Yeah. So I'm gonna just stand here and support this. What were you doing with the saws off? There's a root. Oh. And that might have been help pushing it, but I don't know if that was the whole cause or not. I got some gloves. If anybody oh, considered great needs gloves. Uh, even it's not quite enough underground. So we we're gonna actually remove this right out of the hole. I'll get the daddy long legs off of here. So um, you'll never damage a stone this way. The only thing is if, if there's um, flakes, you could you could exacerbate that condition. But we can just, just lay it right down on the edge and actually uh, use gravity. So we can just remove it right out of the way. And now actually um, would be a good time to, uh, uh, to illustrate what the sun does. But people would have to come. Um, where are we now? Let me stand it back up and see if we can, if we can, now it's clouding up. <laughs> of course. Okay, well we can come back. About a fifth. So we didn't have enough. Um, we're not going to be worrying about any of these, you know, the fact the stone is, is badly spalling, it has numerous issues, but we're going to make it so it's not going to fall over. So we're looking for about a third, um, so we could measure, I could just, I, I could say about a third is right around here. That's what happened with the lady from the 41st cemetery. Somebody else is supposed to do the tours. They okay. can't do the tours. Yeah, gravel? They can't do the tours. Did you put them up at the yeah. same yeah. time? Huh? Yeah, it's underneath. Oh, okay, mix it, mix it up a little then. Just flatten it out. Yeah, it up. Stick your hand in my mind. No, don't use your hand. Use <laughs> the flat shovel. <laughs> you got a lot of rust in your pipes, huh? <laughs> it depends on how often they're used. Some of them, the ones that are used quite often, the water comes out nice and clear. Well, I wouldn't want to use this water for cleaning stones, but that's not what we're doing here. Um, I'd let it run clear. But I use these uh, all the time. I never put fertilizer. I never put anything in them but water. And they're, yeah. And these work great. And they, this is for uh, compaction, because if you um, if you don't wet it, materials, they'll tend to um, they'll tend to be a lot of air, and you get a lot of settling. So um, now the sun is gone. Now that I was going to illustrate the uh, inscription part, but anyway. Um, that's all right. We'll have a, another chance later. You want to avoid ever lifting anything because it takes way more muscle and it's just much easier to always use leverage. So you end up um, tipping things all the time. You can tip things way heavier than you can lift. Additionally, they call it walking something. You can walk something like this really easily, especially if it has a flat bottom. So you can move stuff around like this really easily. It takes almost no effort at all. So you don't really, I mean, it might tear the grass up a little bit. You don't have to worry about it hurting the uh, stone because it's going to go underground anyway. So, and again, if on edge, you could drop this. It's never going to hurt the stone on edge. You wouldn't want to do that on the flat. You could actually shatter it. So we can come into the hole from the side and just come right up. Okay. Now the next step. 
is going to be getting an uh, approximate alignment and somebody has to go down the end of the row and and see what it looks like. I mean, I can already tell it's got to come forward and it's crooked and all this other stuff. This thing is crooked and it may not matter in a historic graveyard, but the point is you're trying to have it blend in and if it's not that historic, it may matter a lot. Like sometimes there's like in, you know, the military, the rows are perfect dead lines and in that case you want you can even use a string and put a line out and make sure you're right on that line. So Anyway, it's looking pretty good. And then a shovel of gravel on each side. That'll be fine. And someone else can kind of run this here. If you have a camera in your hand, but if you want to do that too, and just wet that as they, you know. Okay, now we need some in front. Go ahead. You just start with the, yeah, okay, go ahead. Get that one in there. Okay, now one of gravel. Go ahead, in the front. Okay. Okay. And you can see, look at, we already held it in place just with that little bit of material. I mean, it's obviously not solid. And try not to spill too much just because we want to keep the area neat. So it's no big deal. But, um, so yeah, yeah, we're gonna want to we're gonna want to tamp it now. That's good with the water for now. Okay. And now we can uh, we can come in with some more um, material, another sand. We start using the, the finished material, and if um, if there's sod, I remove the sod first and try to reuse it. If there's good topsoil, I will separate that first. There really wasn't much here, because then you can top dress it and avoid the need to bring in topsoil or reseed or anything like that. Shoveling. So we're going to just fill it up. Let's see if for the last couple shovels, if we can find some that's a little darker, that was more like topsoil. Uh, maybe on the bottom. On the bottom, yeah. That's good. I'm gonna sh There's absolutely no movement. I'm yeah. even I'm even afraid to touch. No, it's not gonna bring well. yeah. No. And and additionally, generally speaking, the brownstone is gonna be pretty strong in the front back. It's the marble that's gonna snap easily. Okay, everybody take this, this is more like a piece of plywood, so there's all the layers. Mm-hmm. Getting to the bottom of it, especially on that spot. Oh, that's good. No, no, there's nothing. I I know him from uh the one because he uh hole and put a block in and now I'm under it and and it actually it actually moves it. See, I'm already lifting it. Get in just like we were doing before, um, in order to let it plumb this up. And it appears it's pretty good in this orientation, so we can probably get away with one tip from this side. So what we can do is we can kind of. I already kind of got it ready. There's actually one spot here I can open this up. Anyway, and I have bigger bars. I have a bar eight feet. That's about twice as fat as this. That thing is like a, it would, uh, it's a, just a weightlifting exercise moving it. <laughs> it's going to kind of go in on itself, on its own. Just from, Yeah, you should. We'll see. Yeah. And somebody could hold the level. we got a lot of people here. It's not going to pack until I tip it again. If you like. Actually, any. Yeah, go ahead. Just yeah. her down. Okay. Yeah, we can do it in multiple lifts. We don't have to do it all at once. Is that, is that hard? Or so as we get higher, there'll be less and less weight. So now it should tip a lot easier. Oh, look at that. Right. That block might break, but the one under it should be okay. And that's also the wrong shovel to use. I mean, that's what you have, but because it's not yeah, exactly. flat. Okay, that's good. Jacking, I should say. Anyway. Um, so we're going to use the same process to, to write this first and, and plumb it up, and then we'll clean up the surfaces, and then we can join it back together again. Ant farm. Oh, it's way underground. Well, it did fall. Oh, maybe it's on three. Yeah, it's hard to tell. There's one more gravel, and that's good.
Demonstrate. Now this will tend to drive it into the gravel, but we can also move it by planting a point. And we can use the different size blocks. And if we get a good angle down here, we can move real heavy stuff pretty easily. Your detect's a big history book. A lot of other, a lot of these other biologically degradable solute clean solutions. You don't recommend? I don't. Yeah, I, I don't know what they. Yeah, I I use this because I it's I know it's safe. Some of the other ones might be all right, but I don't know. We can take a lot of this right off with a plastic scraper. You get the heavy stuff off, and you do your dishes, and uh, it won't harm the stone at all. That's a strong So we can just get the. That's just water you put on there. Yeah, that was all that we did to loosen it up a little. On for uh, five or ten minutes. But depending on how you're using it, this is a unique material because most cleaners you really have to make sure that they don't soak into the stone a lot because you don't get to this lower joint, but it, it wouldn't be a Portland mortar. They look like these white ones, but for some reason they're in a really good shape. Mr. Herbal made this one. Yeah, you think so. I would think so, but there's nothing here. Big heavy stone like that. Unless for some reason the foundation was dug up, maybe digging a grave or something. On the back now too. That's good. Bring it right to the front where we made that uh, footprint. That's good. You can go all the way on that side now if you want. So it hits and then come around to this side. You got a lot of these. This would make a big difference. That's yeah. What means are beginning. We'll see. We should be Lead right. wedge, it's called. Yeah. And they, they, this, they, you can buy it by the pound, but they try to sell you 25 pound spool. But just tell them you want to buy a couple pounds, and usually the they will let you. If you insist. Now is that in your information? Yeah, you everything. Like yeah, it should be putty in it. But again, lime putty doesn't hold up, especially in the acidic environment. I would not use a pure lime putty. If someone wanted to mortar it together, like if someone specced it and they wanted it historically appropriate, they didn't want to use any materials like this, I could use a, a, a mortar instead. But I don't because this is, is, is stronger. It'll last longer. It's cleaner. There's a lot of advantages. Mortar is messy. And um, anyway, now here comes the rain again. Perfect timing. This up. I think we're good on the rain. So maybe we can find something in this general vicinity since everyone's right here and especially with the weather being so dicey. Yeah, fractured. Took the putty, you made like a Well, everyone can fan out and look for one. Well, we've seen our old stack in here 20, 12 years ago. No, we had a vandalism in the hose house up here on the hill. We had a hollow in the After the party, the kids came down here and snapped off stone. This is actually a little fatter than I want here. Bob, that big one down there is not fractured, is it? The one that's out of the pedestal? I think that's the whole piece, right? Funny other thing. And. I'm not going to use it right now because it's going to be quicker if I do it the other way. Anyway, you just mix them together. Now the center came out. They're almost going to mix on their own. Anyway, you just knead them together because it's pre-measured. And then um, it's, it makes enough for one repair, maybe two. So it's a one-time use epoxy. These cost $8. It's gonna, this is going to be encapsulated inside. This is structural only. This is like just going to make it so that if someone ever tries to push this, that it's all going to come over in one piece. It's not going to come apart. It's going to be structural. You're not going to see this at all. That gray on the outside, just so the epoxy doesn't run out to help stabilize it while it dries? Uh, it's for a lot of, th it's It's also going to, yeah, I mean it's... That's all going to come off there when it does. You're going to, uh, you're going to cut it, you're going to end up with a bead of it that's only... Um, uh, So it's going to squeeze. They also make this um, compound, monument setting compound, 
This is light gray. They make dark gray. They make brown. It's called mahogany. And they make white. White is pretty good, but it's really white. So white on the marble can be good. It almost looks like the lead, the way the lead used to look. But that makes quite a difference, though, between it. Keep an eye on it and see it should lighten up more because it's it's in the it's in the pores of the stone. It should kill the rest of it. There shouldn't be any green on it at all. We can clean these surfaces um, so that we're gonna set it up to join. So let's get the rest of this mud off first and then we wanna clean these bondings and these mating surfaces. Um, this actually in Germany went here temporarily. Is it parallel? Anyone want to try to eye it? We can easily. Get a little closer. We're just eyeing this, and it's it's going to be pr close enough. So see the way I have? They're about equal. Um, actually, I, now I contaminated that one. I'll just use another spoon. It's good for re uh, demonstration anyway. So, to one ratio. It's pretty self-explanatory. And you really can't mess up because the tin is, is half the size for the one. You're going to use the one, so it's one to two. So, um, pretty straightforward surface. We're missing a piece here. So, we can see that. Um, so. See this part, there's no point in putting it here, so we're just going to put it on this surface so we can leave this covered temporarily and we can just apply it to this surface. So we're going to want to um, put it right down the middle. We want to keep it away from the edge. Um, if we bring it up to the edge, we want to keep it thin because we want to minimize the squeeze out. So um, if you get squeezed out, how do you clean it off? I, I, it, some people like use a solvent right away, which I don't recommend because then it tends to weaken it, and also it's 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 just a pain. Um, if you let it start to cure, depending on the temperature, that could be 20 minutes, a half hour, or an hour, using the right amount. So I pretty much have enough on here already, and now I can spread it around. Um, well, boy, it doesn't take much, does it? No, not for joining fragments. No, and the and the common beginner mistake is too much. And like I said, start in the middle, work it out so that it's thinner on the edge. You could even leave the last eighth inch just open like that because you will get some squeeze out. That'll give how, you how big of a stone like will that stuff hold, or doesn't size matter? Oh, it'll hold almost anything. It's just a matter of it's a more matter of the structural integrity of it. Uh, if if the material is still strong, mm -hmm. in other words, it'll break adjacent to it. It'll be strong. Stones that are broke off too close to the ground and like that. So you want to just kind of work it back. It's all right. It's not going to affect it so much now. So just work it back and forth a little. And um, it's a tiny bit of squeeze out on the front. Almost. Okay, there's little tiny blips of it coming through. And now the sun's out. <laughs> okay, we could just leave it open now. Okay. We'll take it back away, but uh, no, that's quite all right. I didn't realize I missed him. I'm happy with these two here. What's going on? And just as a rule with mortar, um, any mortar, whether it's Portland cement or not, you want your masonry to be wet first. Not, actually I shouldn't say that, it should be damp. It shouldn't be in an 